Welcome to Pseudo Random. Hello, Internet. Hi. And, hi, and welcome to another episode of Pseudo Random. Hmm. I'm just the introducer. I'm here to introduce Colin. Hi, I'm Colin. That, that's Lady Ada. Hi, and we're a team. We're going to be talking today about Arduino. Arduino. It's true. Can we say it together? Arduino. Arduino. Mm -hmm. uh, it is Arduino Day 2016. It is, wow, it's been like oh, 14 years of Arduino. I actually don't know it's, that. It's a day to remember. It's, it's a day, and uh, it's a day after April Fool's, but this is no joke. Nope. This is the for real thing. So this is a day to celebrate how Arduino has changed the maker movement, changed electronics, changed art, it's technology. It's a really big deal, actually. Yeah. It's a really big yeah. deal. It's like, changed me for the better. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. Yeah, you. Yeah. yeah, no, I was I was the total loser, nobody. But then I got into Arduino, started going to the gym, lifting megas. Right. Yeah, I went vegetarian yams. right after. Yeah. That. yeah. Okay. See, it's yeah. it makes you healthier, wealthier, and wiser. But it did activate a lot of curiosity for me. It opened the digital doors when I was only just a little bit analog before. Okay. For me, so yeah. Well, we did the last digital gateway the drug. The last pseudo random we talked about. Um, color organs, which a little bit, and synthesizers. And you talked about how you were building your own synthesizers. And was mm -hmm. that before you got into Arduino? Um, I was, I was building like amplifiers, and I wanted to make. I made little noisemakers, so mm -hmm. you know synthesizers. Like five, 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 yeah, stuff like that. Maybe an oscillator. But then I, I got, um, I got pretty excited with the uh, ability to get digital and use uh, maybe even MIDI. It was, it was all far off, you know, concepts. I'm like, could I, maybe I could hook a keyboard up? Wow. And uh, I took a, a class, I'm forgetting exactly where it was. It was downtown Brooklyn, I don't know the name of the organization, but a little class on getting started uh, with Arduino stuff. And everybody else in the class knew all this programming and stuff and things and stuff I didn't know about. And I tried to keep up, it was a little strange. And uh, I loved it, though. And uh, I, I did, actually, I think before that class, I did hack together from two separate sketches a little synth, a little MIDI synth. I found one that was like a MIDI input sketch, and then I found another one that was like, that was the like, frequency, it just had pitches that it would be able to play over a intended to use a piezo. And I, without knowing much, sort of copy and pasted and mash them together until they, they worked. And um, I think we have a picture of that, oh, yeah. of that project. Let's go to the picture. Yeah, it's, um, it's it looks special. Is the piano one or the it other one? Early. Wh which one is it? It's, it's both. It could be the one with the keyboard in it. OK, well, people, right. people yeah. are, who are watching live on Facebook, they can go to Flickr to your to right. Flickr account and then yep. search for what MIDI Flickr.com slash yeah. Colin Mel and um, I think it's Arduino synth. Okay, let me look so, at this picture. so not this much to look at there with just a couple caps and uh, but we used an NG. Yep. So this is this was made in about 2006, 2007? Something like that okay. around there. And uh, and I and then I added some simple controls. If you go to the next next pick, Phil, it, you'll see. Uh, really Really pretty, sturdy, uh, uh, not, you know, <laughs> it was early days and uh, I was just on my desk and having a lot of fun with, uh, with some solid core wire hanging out. So, Looks great to so, me. Yeah, I mean, hey, things evolved. Things works. evolved a lot. I eventually made a shield. Uh, oh, a custom shield even. Yep, I did. With, with like, the toner transfer stuff we talked about? Um, I made, well, with, yeah, with toner transfer. Okay. Um, I did. I like how we're tying this together. Actually, I yeah, I did. It's I like actually, a thread. I have that. Oh, wait, you have it with you? I do have it with me. Oh, my goodness. I know. I made it was what I called the MIDI Vox. Okay. Well, maybe, yeah, I'll show it on the overhead and yeah, then we'll show it on the overhead well. and then, and then I'll, we'll, we'll segue proper. Okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, MIDI Vox. Is it okay, like so. the focal box? You can hold this. Oh, okay. Oh, this is too close. That's why. You actually have to. See, I love macro, so I'm always going to push for that. Okay. Yeah, so this was the first one I did and etched. And wow. yeah, this. And you even did the, the tin electroplate. I did. I did tin it. Wow. I love tinning. Oh, ah, look at that. Yep. That's awesome. Curlies. And what did you use to lay this out? Oh, uh, this was Eagle. Okay. Yep. Nice use of the <laughs> rounded traces. That's beautiful. This is very, it looks very organic. It's. Uh, it's it, it's an artifact for me. Okay. Yep. And Beautiful. eventually I made that into a real PCB. This is all just because of what Arduino opened the door 
for me. That's a made beautiful possible. PCB. Where did you get the PCB made? Or uh, that was a uh, PCB cart. Mm -hmm. This this space left little flux on there. Blank. This space intentionally left blank. Yes. That's where the USB port goes. You have to you actually can't put it in there. Right. Exactly. Okay. So so that's how Arduino changed my life. Okay. And, and from oh, the beginning. Oh, can you hold that up to just so people can see? Because the live people. Oh okay. right. Awesome. That guy. Yeah. yeah. See. Okay. So that's the uh -huh. that's the fully made. Right. Lovely PCB. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, and you know I wish. I just when I was when I first started this stuff I wish. There was just a simple way to sort of sum up the process for me. Like, mm -hmm. like it's going to be like this, moving a little hardware, and then this, going over and doing a little code, and just sort of describing that abstract link between them. And so eventually, much more recently, mm -hmm. I made a video. Yeah, because there's some people who might be watching this video and they're like, I have absolutely no mm -hmm. idea what these two people are talking about? Right. What is this right. Arduino? What is Arduino? Yeah. Why? Why are they holding up this infinity sign? Is mm -hmm. this part of the Illuminati? Mm -hmm. uh, and the it answer still is, could be. I'm not it sure. still could be. But um, we actually, you did a really great video introducing people to what Arduino is and how to get started with it, and how to, they too can go on this addictive journey of right. electronics experimentation. Right. I just, you know, give the first one free, and then. Actually, you don't start charging. They're all free after It's that. open source. It's all yeah. free. All right, mm -hmm. so why don't we roll that video? Sounds like a good idea. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Arduino microcontroller boards are the go-to option for most basic digital electronics projects. They're easy to use and used by many. But what is a microcontroller? you might ask. A microcontroller is like a very basic computer on a chip. You upload programs to it, and it runs that program code over and over in a loop. This code can control the microcontroller pins by powering them on or off, or detecting whether a positive or negative charge is connected to them. The chip itself uses additional external components to provide timing, USB, and power support. The Arduino includes all of these things on a single board along with rows of socket headers which are connected to the microcontroller pins, making it easy to get your project up and running quickly. There are many flavors of Arduino available, but when you're just getting started, go with an Arduino Uno. This is the most vanilla model available and should cover most common project requirements. One important element, which can't be included on the board, is the software used to write Arduino code. We, of course, run that on our computer. A basic Arduino program, or sketch, consists of two parts, the setup and the loop. The setup section includes code we want to run only once when the board first starts up, and the loop contains code that we want to run again and again forever in a loop. So for example, let's say I want to flash an LED connected to pin 3. In the setup, I'll tell the Arduino to set the pin we're using to output mode so it can provide power to the LED. Then in the loop, I'll turn the power for that pin on or high. Tell the Arduino to wait for let's say half a second, and then turn the power pin off or low, and then wait for another half second. Once this code is finished running and the Arduino reaches the end of the loop, it will return to the beginning and run all the code over again and again and again. So if we upload the sketch to our board, we can see it doing just what we told it to. The LED powers on for half a second, then goes dark for another half second, and repeats. So that's an example of using a pin in output mode, but what about input? The simplest form of input hardware is a momentary push button. I'll connect one side of this button to the 5 volt pin and the other side to pin 7. 
Now in my code, I'll set pin 7 to input mode in the setup. And in the loop, I'll check to see if pin 7 is high or connected to positive voltage. And if it is, I'll light the LED by setting the LED pin high. If it's not, I'll set the LED low. When the button is pushed, a connection is made between pin 7 and 5 volts. So far, we've been using what's called digital input. This means the Arduino checks to see if there is or isn't a positive charge present at a pin. But there's also another type, analog input. Analog input measures the amount of voltage present at a pin. And because it's a special function, only several pins can actually use it. We can create a variable voltage input by hooking up a small potentiometer. One side of the potentiometer connects to power and the other to ground, while the middle lead connects to analog pin zero. Now, I could alter my code to light the LED once the potentiometer is turned past a certain point, but that's a little boring, no? Luckily, the Arduino can simulate analog output, which gives us the ability to dim the LED in response to readings from the potentiometer. So in my code, I'll read the analog value from the potentiometer and then turn around and send it right back out to the LED. So you see, the strength of Arduino is that each little part and concept can be adapted to new and interesting components, sensors, even motors. And this is made even easier through the use of Arduino libraries. Now, libraries are collections of pre-written code that allow you to perform complex operations simply. For example, controlling a servo motor. While I could spend hours learning how they work and writing the code for an Arduino to control it, it's much faster to include the Arduino servo library instead. So now, with only a few changes, I can convert the potentiometer's position into motorized motion. In addition to all the individual components you can use with an Arduino, there are add-on boards called shields. Shields are sort of like the hardware equivalent of libraries. Shields provide specialized functionality via a pre-designed circuit board that mounts right on top of the Arduino. There are shields for sound playback, controlling motors, LCD displays, LED matrices, GPS, many, many different uses. All this variety of hardware, example code, libraries, and the huge community of people who use Arduino means that it's really easy to do pretty much anything electronic with one of these little boards. So if someone asks, what can I do with an Arduino? I suppose the best response would be, what do you want to do? And we're back. Okay, so now everybody who's watching is an expert about Arduino. Right, we're done, you're Thank up you. to speed, excellent. So now that we're all on the same page, we can talk about the history yeah. of Arduino. Yeah, let's totally uh, of the boards. some Marillion of the Arduino here. Let's here's, look at here's the, one of the first ones. Let's look at the first Arduino. So this was, I think this photo was shot in the previous Arduino. This is Massimo brought this to our place, right? That's right. I think so. So we, that was that looks a lot like the countertop. I place. don't know if I've seen that before. Yeah, so this is it's a, an Atmega 8. 8. It's okay. an Atmega 8 and it's got a parallel port programmer. So you know, you can you, you right know, back when computers yeah. had parallel ports, mm -hmm. there was um, in AVR dude there was the DT006 programming type because okay. I use it for the mini pub and you could mm -hmm. toggle the pins to uh, it was a teeny bit slow. Mm -hmm. well, it wasn't that slow. It was okay. Bang and bang. Then, yep. Yeah, you had to have a little bit of a driver and you could program the chip directly. So I think that was the first prototype. 
wow. of yeah. Arduino. And actually, I have a theory. Well, I'll talk about after we show the okay. Arduino. I want to show the, what I think I the like predecessor All right. of, of Arduino is. That's the first one. And that's the only one. And this is what done in Ivrea. All right, let's, let's go over here. Okay. And then we can, because um, I got to look at this. Hey. Oh. Okay. Yeah. You, you no, want to swap? I'm, no, I'm just yeah, getting close. Okay. I'm getting close to you. Okay. I'm comfortable with humans. Okay. So this is the first, first Arduino that we have. And it's one of the first, I think this is the first series of manufactured Arduinos. So you can see it's got the name, uh, uh, Bondi, Cortez, Mellis. Right up here. And Zambetti, who is the fifth Arduino. The secret Arduino member. And what's funny is this used to be on, or it didn't even have their own site yet. It was on brolios.de, which was a, a, um, the GPL compliant, happy uh, source forge, which totally uh, died when GitHub took over. I don't even think it's up anymore. But you can tell it's a kind of hand soldered. It's got that FTDI chip, so they, they definitely mm -hmm. update to a bootloader. And it's got an Atmega 8. There's uh, this crystal, which is for the FTDI. And then this crystal, which is for the Atmega. But the overall shape is pretty much set. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's not that far from... Got that characteristic spacing. The characteristic spacing and the, all the pins right. are set, digital and analog. Mm -hmm. And then the only thing is it doesn't have the auto changeover. So that right. you have to actually the jumper. move that jumper mm -hmm. to change between the five volts from the USB and the five volts from uh, the regulator. And yeah, you can see it's kind of yeah. Di handmade. Different design here. Yeah, what's funny is that, you know, there's a date code area, but it's not filled out. So we don't oh, know okay, what right here. Is. But if you flip Early it days. over, yeah. it has a date code on the FTDI chip. And what, what does it say? It says like five, it says oh, 0512. One. Oh, did you? I think slot? down here. That guy says, "Yep, five twelve dash one." So I think that's two thousand five, and then the Atmega Mega has what's the date code on the Atmega? Mega? It's like oh four something. Oh four four nine G. So that would be two thousand four forty ninth, which is basically the very end of two thousand four. So this was probably made, you know, early mid two thousand five. Yeah, it really hasn't changed all that much. Yeah, no, I mean, like, it. it's, it's the, the Arduino chips even in the same location. I mean, the reset button is in the same place. I think it's even got the LEDs and everything. Not not a lot different. Pretty pretty straightforward. So, so this cutaway uh, corner, that's which design. has lasted, I mean, that's design? That's, I mean, that's to save, uh, you know, that's for paneling? Or no, save that's, I think they space? just didn't want to make it rectangular. That's the, they wanted to, I think when Massimo talked to us about it, he said, oh, it's like, we want to make it an interesting shape. And it survives to this day. It survives to this day. So okay, so that's after like, this... Yeah, so that's the Atmega 8. And then after that was the NG. Right. And, it, and now, so what's the key differences here? I mean, we have different hardware. It's okay, so the key difference here is the uh, FTDI changed from an FT232BM to an RL. So it's a little bit less expensive. Let me look at that. So that's one big difference. And also you don't need an oscillator right. for it. Right, yeah. Uh, also, the original amazing. Arduino did not have a pin 13 LED, and I think the NG does, right? Pin 13, um... Is there an L LED? Long. Maybe not. 13. Maybe that was added later. Let's see when I see TX, RX, and I see power. Yeah, okay, so they both, that not changed there. Um, AREF is still there, the pins are still the same. Okay. I think the main difference really is the regulator is a little bit bigger and the FTDI chip got changed from the the BM, the BL series to the RL, hmm. which is a lot cheaper. I think it's a little bit cheaper. Oh, you don't need a crystal for it. Yeah, you can need a crystal. And it's also, I don't know if you can really see it on this camera, but it's, it's a nice, uh, near uh, slightly translucent uh, green board. Yeah, yeah blue oh, green board. Oh, also the chip updated, right? What's, what's the Atmega on there? It's an Atmega 168. Okay, so it went from right, Atmega right on. 8. That's right. To 168, which is a really big change. Mm -hmm. I remember doing projects on the eight. And no, this is I, I never did. That was I. Could, this is the board that I. Yeah, I came in on. I started on. Yes, yeah, so I remember this Italy, back. And then vividly. this is Arduino number seven thousand four hundred and forty-seven. How many Arduinos oh. are there up now, Phil? What do you think? Mm. Well, over the million mark. Not yeah, enough. Over million. Yeah. Okay. What's funny is I actually had two Arduino NGs before this that I bought and I uh, made into an installation. So, so yeah, these were, these are the first two. And also I think then 
I think the names changed. Right. So the, this, oh, the names, this is Banzi, Cortez, Melis, and Zambetti, and then Tom Igo and Gianluca were added, but Zambetti was um, was killed off in a ninja fight. Right. He was replaced by by Ringo. Yeah. Or, I heard the Arduino team is much like uh, Menudo. As soon as one of them gets to a certain age, they just kill one of them off and they get a new one. Like a younger, more attractive right. one. Right. It's, yeah. it's fluid. It's fluid. fluid. That's so this, more is, this is like the classic five Arduino founder. Yes. The, the ones that I grew to know. Yeah. yeah. And so then this is, we also have this lovely signed. Oh, yeah. Which, I, which I'm defacing slightly with That's fine. the back so of the board. Is, oh, yeah. This is signed by David Mellis. Gianluca, Massimo, Tom Igo, and Melis. So this is the, sorry, no. This is Melis, Tom Igo, Massimo, Gianluca, which means this is David Cortez, I think. He's got the most exciting signature. So this is like historic because we're never gonna get all the <laughs> signatures ever again. But uh, yeah, this was a couple of years ago. This was from Arduino Day 2010 or something, 2011? Like 11, yeah. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Okay, so well, let's let's to, continue. To continue, our yeah, tour. it's not the, all the boards you have; quite a collection here. Okay, so after the NG, actually, what what date was the? Uh, do you have that NG? The NG. Yeah, I want to see what date. The date code on the. On yeah. The this one is 06. This one's 0721. 07. So 06. So this is both um, 06. There's no date code on this the PCB. From 2006 to 2007, at least. Oh. Yeah. So I think this is this is about the 2006-2007 uh, era. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And so then we move up to from the NG to, to the, the Duemila Nove. All right. So this was a pretty big. Sorry, no, the Duemila was first, right? Oh. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 The Duemila is, is first. Yeah. So this one came after the NG. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Dechimila, doesn't that stand for like, what is, it? What is Dechimila? I don't even know. Something. Uh, well, D is 10, uh, 10 year. Do I mean, no, it would be 2000. Dechimila is one, I don't know. Anyway, I don't know the time. See, We're so this hope, one added, English this added, uh, I think, the reset pin. Okay. And three volts. That was the only different? Oh, yeah. I mean. So from. NG, oh, right, yeah, and the header got the bigger NG than I remember didn't that. didn't have three volts or reset at the bottom, and this added that. So that's the, that's the difference there. But you still have the, and it added L. The, no, no, now it added the LLED. Right, that the was LED added. on pin 13, right. The pin 13 LED was added then. But you still have the switch on the power. Oh, it also added a fuse. This fuse was, is not there on the NG. Right, we, we still have the jumper. Yeah, I still have the jumper though. And the chip, is it a 16, 168? The chip is a 328, there we go. We've arrived at 328. Think, yeah, era. was it? I mean, also, by the way, I could have updated it. Right, okay, that's true. Okay, but, so I don't remember offhand. And this one uh, does have a date code of um, 0908, so 2009. Right. We're talking about 2009. 2009, moving right along. Okay, so yeah, so now we're really we're getting that blue. And then they got Arduino. No, Arduino CC is on the NG, so by then they definitely got that. Can you flip it over? Mm -hmm. And then they added the nice silk screen and tinker it. So there was also a uh, serial number, but I guess I pulled it off. When it was, when it was stolen, or I don't know. No, so, I mean, maybe nice you had to check, screen. change the uh, resolder or something. Pad. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, we got this that blue. This is always the thing I, I dealt with, was protecting bottoms, and bump ponds weren't enough, because I would have lots of shrapnel on my workbench. Mm. Eventually started making, like, sleds to put on. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Okay, so that's the, and then the Duemila Nova came after that. So Duemila Nova, actually, what the big update is, the op amp and the transistor here, okay. to have an auto power switch. Oh, right, right. So now okay. you don't need to use that yep. jumper anymore. That has been taken care Freedom of. Freedom has been delivered. But yep. has the LEDs still the same? I think the 328. 328 by the Dwayne Lenovo is definitely the 328. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely the power switcher over Nest. That's the big, and that's the big update. 
a bubbly Italy sticker. Yeah, and then uh, that's pretty much it, I think, for the update. I'll flip it over and then, yeah, so it says at Mega 328, and it tell, it's also Tinkerati made in Italy. Definitely not going to confuse that with another chip that should go there. That is no, prominent. No, that is the 328. Yep. It would be interesting if they put that on the bottom. Hmm. Yeah, it is. They never did that again, Maybe they did had they? two versions. Maybe they had the one that was 168 and uh, one that was 328. Yeah. But then this was this is getting really close if to the end. If you don't know, right? this is, now you know. That's pretty much. And you know what? There's actually there were two Unos. I think there was the Uno and the Uno mm. R3, but I don't know if I have any original. Hmm. I just realized that there was um, the Uno came in two flavors, but because there's the R3, which added um, the uh, the extra pins. This is where we first have the official logo showing up. The what? The logo. Yeah, the logo came here, and then they changed the FTDI chip to an Atmega uh, 8U2 or in the 16U2. Um, so it can now theoretically be reprogrammed to act like an HID device or main right, device. Right, right. That was the, a big deal, yeah. The, the reset button moved, so now mm -hmm. it's in the corner. Yeah, much easier to get to. Not much there. easier to get to, which is really nice. Made a big difference. Um, the on L, RX, and TX LEDs are the same. And then there's that header if you want to reprogram right. it. And then they added the SCL and SDA pins over here. Yep. And they also added keep going up. IORF and then a non-connect pin, which I don't really see anybody use, but it's there. Yeah, I haven't. And then the bottom still screen got up Went a white. Lot. Yeah, it's a nice look. Contrast. Yeah. Super fancy. A lot of design and FCC certification, there. really. And then we have like some this weird other stuff. Like we have this like red. 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 What? Prototype limited edition. It's the it's the anti world. It's the other dimension. It's yeah, the evil like, Arduino. Yeah, it's yep. just like um Needs bizarro, on bizarro it. Arduino. Yep. Yep. <laughs> okay. yep. This is if uh, Superman. Exactly. This is the communist one. Yeah. We would have all red Arduino. I would love to see like a bumpy, you know, craggy white one, like like bizarro Superman actually. But yeah. anyway. I'll have to work on that and get back to you. I like the red solenoid. It's actually, it's a really beautiful contrast. You can see all the pins, so the wire so easily. Right. That's it, a prototype. Yeah, I think we just got that when we were, we were testing something. And now there's like, you know, dozen different types of Arduino boards. So, just a side a side track. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I guess I knew at one point, but what's the benefit of you know perforating uh, the ground plane like this? Oh, hatching. Is it for yeah hatching? Is is it have to do with thermal or what? Is it just? You know, I don't know. I I see sometimes people use hatched um, ground planes. I mean, it could be. I mean, it could be for ease of, um, I know that sometimes if you have certain types of um, layout for the copper, you want to have a different, uh, like you don't want to have too much copper in one place and too little in another, and like so okay. this might balance it. This might make right. it so it isn't like gigantic. You could take out some weight, if you it, will. Yeah, it takes right. out weight. Um, I don't know if that's the situation here. Right, I mean, and if I, I mean, what I've found is if I'm soldering to a, a hatch ground plan, it's easier. So maybe you get all the benefit of like the, the cleanliness of a, the signal cleanliness of a ground plane without the thermal overhead. Right, of right. It. it could be, yeah, you know what, actually it could be if it's selective solder or wave soldered. Okay, then um, that would You don't influence. have to preheat as much because mm -hmm. the copper isn't, because you know, you're, you're heating the entire board basically. Um, when you, right when you yeah. preheat it, and preheat's like annoying because it takes more time because you have to heat up the entire board and then you have to select a solder or wave. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking maybe that has more to do with it. Again, you get all that signal joy, but you don't have the, that, I mean, because it's a gigantic ground plane, because there's not a lot going on here. Th that would take so much um, effort to heat up. And right. so you might get better results from wave and selective soldering. All the joy, less work. So there's actually a new Arduino today. I don't know if you knew this. I, I heard I heard rumors. There's rumors. I heard rumors from a video. Yeah. And and it's it's using a different chip. We could just let the video speak for itself. I won't spoil it. That's right. The founder of Arduino have a video, and we're gonna play it right now. Let's mm -hmm. play this right now. Happy, Happy Arduino. Arduino Day. Bum 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 b
So welcome everybody to Arduino Genuino Day 2016, a global celebration of the Arduino community. Over 350 uh, events are taking place the same day in over 70 countries around the world. It's a self-organized event where communities around the world get together and celebrate Arduino, Genuino, the community, they talk about what they do, they make new friends. Every year, when Arduino Genuino Day happens, we have an event where we take part in, in person. Welcome to the University of California, Berkeley and the Jacobs Institute for Design Innovation. This is a new makerspace on campus to kind of support and promote uh, maker activity here at Berkeley. So we want to uh, send out a shout out to our friend David Cuartiers, co-founder of Arduino, who is in Mexico City attending Genuino Day there. Genuino Arduino Day is a chance for us to also introduce new ideas, new products, new, uh, new platforms. So this year we are announcing the first module of Arduino Create are available. Arduino Create is a platform we've been working on for the last year, which has an online development environment for Arduino, a cloud platform, which makes it easy for people to connect, to create devices that connect to each other, and a project hub. And the Project Hub is a place where people can share projects, tutorials, they can collaborate, get feedback, also you know, get support and kudos, but really creates a collaboration within the community. That particular platform is based on Hackster.io, uh, but uh, it is tightly integrated and customized for the Create experience. And you know, we used Hackster to run this competition uh, recently with Microsoft, based on Microsoft Azure, where we had over 5,000 submissions of projects. Today we will announce the winner of that competition, but that competition was based on this new board called the Genuino or Arduino Maker 1000. And I'll let Tom explain a little bit about the platform. Sure, so this new board is a 32-bit board. It's running an ARM M0 processor. It's also got an Atmel Wi-Fi module on board that has built-in encryption, so it can handle security a little bit better. It's got a battery charger on board as well, and uh, Dave and I used it just uh, last month here at Berkeley to do a workshop with the students, and we were able to get students up and running on the network very fast and very easy, so we're looking forward to introducing it to a whole bunch more students around the world. This is available from today on the Arduino online store for $34.99 dollars plus taxes and so this is a very exciting addition to the Arduino uh, Genuino product family and we can't wait to see what you're going to be building with this. Uh, I guess one last piece of news from Arduino is that you all know about the Arduino Genuino 101 we built with Intel. It contains a very advanced dual core processor that runs a real-time operating system. So today Intel and Arduino are releasing that real-time operating systems as open source. So basically every single piece of that device is now open source and we're very excited about that. And you know, we think it's gonna be, a, a, again, another big contribution to the, to the, to the maker community from, from Intel. We hope you enjoy. Arduino Genuino Day 2016 anywhere you are in the world. And thank you uh, again to UC Berkeley and the Jacobs Institute for hosting us here. Arduino Genuino Day is all about the community, so if you go home with one more friend than you came with, we're going to be very happy. Have a great day. Thank you. New, new, new. New, 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 new. Yeah, this new, is their new, new. products. So they have the new Create, so it's an online IDE. Right. Uh, it has a full... Can, can you use it yet? I, I actually don't know. Okay. I, 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 I haven't been I saw the video able... and then we had to start yeah, filming. Yeah, yeah. Uh, ditto. I'm, I'm, it sounds cool. I'm curious. I'd like to sign up for it because I want to try this out. I think the idea of having an online IDE is powerful and very interesting, especially if it's tied in with the community. And mm -hmm. because they have the online, the built-in like online board manager and library manager, it mm -hmm. actually makes sense now because right. you can have... Like instead of like, oh, your code has to rely on like this weird network of, of personal libraries, you can actually link to. It's all there. There's it's sort all, of yeah, all, it's dynamic. all available. So that would be at like every <laughs> common library at least would be yeah, preloaded they're basically. All re they're all pre-registered with Arduino. Like we, right. we've so got yeah, that So like system. if you could have downloaded them from the automatic board manager, they're already there. Exactly. That is cool. That's yeah, a good point. I mean, it's a big difference. I think that's what they're doing. Although it has gotten so much easier lately with the recent releases, having the board manager. Dude, the board support package stuff cool. is amazing. I'm still, I'm still a little bit like uh, apprehensive about using online IDEs. I don't know why. It doesn't make a difference. Internet connection is always there.
it's like uh, switching think, to Spotify. I think, got, I'm I think like, we got burnt a little bit. Mm -hmm. But you know, I, I stream music. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. <laughs> I still want it for myself, local. I want to be able to cut off in the world. Well, because isolate. you like using Xcode. But right. we'll see. Look, the, right. the thing about Create IDs is that you know, they can update it to add code completion, mm -hmm. code folding. Stuff. I'm ready to be pushed over. I'm ready to, ready to be influenced. I'm okay. ready to be changed. Maybe I'll try and, it out tonight. I don't know. Get, our, get our Unos yeah. up and running. Okay, and so then not only that, there's the board, right? The board. The board in the video. Yes, right. they also introduced a new board, the Maker 1000, which is part mm -hmm. of a, a big Maker campaign. Maker 1000. Maker 1000. It's over 1,000, no, it's exactly equal to 1,000. Um, and they, there, was a, there was a collaboration with, I think, Microsoft and Atmel. It uses the Atmel, it's like the AtSAM W25, which okay. is actually interesting. It's like a, that long module, and it contains a Wing 1500, which is their SSL-capable Wi-Fi module, which I really like. It's actually a very nice Wi-Fi module. So Wi-Fi, that goes under the, sh the grounding shield. That, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, and inside there, too, is also a, a Cortex-M0. Um, the at Sam D twenty one G eighteen, the same chip that's in the zero is also in that module. So it's the MCU in there. It's, it's a, and, yeah, th and, the, and it's under megahertz. the shield too. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, hidden. it's one little module. So you could, you know, and that could add, take a lot of beating. They added battery charging, good, so you can have right? a light poly uh, battery. To, to, the jack on the side. Yeah, jack uh, on the side. And like the feather has. Yeah, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's but it's just like this is the official thing, and oh, it's yeah, going to have right like a lot of support, and has a, also has crypto, which is kind of cool. Um, so there's some situations where you might have to sign, like you can do SSL, but maybe you want to sign or encrypt something. Huh. If it doesn't have SSL, I don't know exactly, but like. It's there if you need it. It's there if you need it. It's built in. And um, we'll probably get it in the Adafruit shop soon. I mean, it's just released like I hope today. so. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm definitely, I have not seen one. So but many great options. They gave now. away like a thousand of them, I think, for this contest. And they're announcing the winner today. I didn't get one. Well, it's okay. We'll, we'll give you one when we get them in the No, screen. I was just adding a little color. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Uh, so that's new and exciting. That, yeah, it's pretty wild. I'll have to check it out. It's a lot of I mean, Wi-Fi built around it. You know, I just, I did all a lot of BLE stuff. I haven't really dipped into Wi-Fi so much. So this will be a cool new option in that regard. They also released the RTOS for the Arduino One, which has, uh, I think, Bluetooth in it. It doesn't have Wi-Fi, it has Bluetooth. It's their like, little mini, mini wearable, okay, the Curie so, processor. So it'd be a BLE so option. So that's oh. kind of interesting, too. Huh. All right, a lot of, a lot that. of high That wasn't stuff. in the video. Huh? That wasn't mentioned in the video. Right? It was, but it's like they just mentioned the RTOS. It was oh, okay, like they didn't okay, talk okay. about the 101. Name drop, right. Cool. A lot of new stuff. This is cool. Yeah, and they're doing a lot more partnerships with like Qualcomm and Intel and Microsoft. So it's interesting to see like they're not just resting on their laurels no they're spreading out yeah they're pushing in all different directions low power high power online there's a lot of activity in the arduino world right uno still good for beginners it's still it's still there it's like yep. the cook classic mm -hmm. intro it's like the cheeseburger mm -hmm. no you don't, you don't eat meat, vanilla the vanilla which is actually quite tasty Baby like vanilla. good like vanilla bean vanilla is, is very good it's it's, it's a chocolate. pretty much super acceptable flavor. I like it. All Some people say, board. "Oh, that's so vanilla," but like, if you have a like, really good like vanilla bean. I don't view ice that cream? that description as a negative, as an insult. Mm -hmm. Depends on context, as mm -hmm. everything does. Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. All right. We provide plenty of that here. That that was a lot of stuff. I think we I covered feel, a lot. I yeah, feel a little a, a little misty eyed. I feel a little yeah. sentimental. Yeah, and just a reminder. Come so um, far. Arduinos. That are Uno and Mega and Leonardo. Oh, and yeah. A few others are made in the USA here by Adafruit. By the way. Hooray. Yay. So if you want to support Arduino.cc, buy a real official Arduino board, and you're also helping us, Adafruit. Freshly Team made. Arduino CC. Right here at home. The good guys. I could smell. Is that a batch right now? <laughs> I could smell. And oh, I did actually, have, I did actually bring some. Sort of a sweet. Fast Teal. Okay, you, can you grab any of the PCB? Well, I'll just hold them up real fast. These are the, this is some panels. Oh yes, Speaking of, of Arduinos that we made. This is the mega panel. So the Arduinos that we make in house, they come on panels, and this one was broken apart to make tester jigs, I think. You can see. So they come, and there was actually eight. So there's ten to a panel, and then this is the uh, Arduino Gemma, which we also make in house. Right. Was that the first official Arduino branded Adafruit? Yes, made? this is the first one that we made with them, right. and it worked out really well. And so, um, after the success of the Gemma, we um, 
we took on even more Arduinos, the Uno, the Mega, the Micro, and the Starter Kit. And the rest is, is history and and going on right now. And the rest of they say is history. Lovely boards. Not just history, but present as well. Right. It's the future. In the future. We've got all your timelines covered. Okay. All right. Well, thank These you, you two for a fantastic Arduino Day celebration. Yeah. I didn't bring my hat. You have an Arduino time. hat? Maybe. It's okay. That's Don't cool. you? Uh, it's secret. It should be. Okay. All right. Tune in, like, and subscribe. Pseudo Random will return again. Thanks, y'all. Happy Arduino Day!